welcome back to strange stories with the seeker and the skeptic today i'm so excited we have someone who has been very influential on my spiritual journey her name is emily jean blatt she is the owner of awakening ground an online spiritual community where she offers akashic record sessions and courses spiritual coaching human design sessions reiki and an assortment of classes and programs throughout the year if you're not in her Facebook group, Awaken and Ground, you really should be. So we'll link all of how to get a hold of Emily Jean below in the description. But thank you so much for being here today, Emily. We're really glad I'm to have so you. I'm so excited. Thank you for having <laughs> me. I am so excited to chat. Yeah. No, this is a conversation I've definitely been looking forward to because you just are a wealth of knowledge and you you really have helped me so much on my journey. So it means a lot. Yeah, I loved seeing where you've taken this this thing, and I have to say, I'm already a fan of your podcast. I listened to yeah. a couple of episodes already, and I'm so excited with what you guys are putting together. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, we're having a ton of fun with it. It's just one of those things that it was like a download idea coming home from a trip, and just like the energy was just like boom, let's just oh move God. in this direction, and it's just it's felt really good, and your it's name. been a lot of fun everything so spot on <laughs> I'm so excited to be on it <laughs> yeah we're very excited to have you so I would love to know about like your spiritual journey where did that all start for you yeah oh my gosh how far back do we go <laughs> <laughs> as far as um, you want to go <laughs> I would say looking back I've always been connected but it was one of those things realizing as I got more into some of this stuff, like, oh, <laughs> this has been happening to me since I was a little kid, but it just felt normal back then. I mean, I have memories of when I was a little kid playing with my energy body at night. Like, I, that's how I would get myself to fall asleep. I have no idea if I was eight, nine, ten, probably somewhere in that range. And I would just lay there and feel my body going up and down, but it wasn't my physical body. And so those memories, I never talked to anybody about, never had anybody to process that with. It was just something that I did. And as I got into this world, I'm like, oh, that's kind of abnormal. <laughs> Not something that a lot of people do. Uh, but for more of like the uh, real training, getting into the training stuff, I had gone through college. I graduated. I went back to my coffee shop job after college um, got into a really awful relationship with somebody who struggled with addiction. And it made me realize, oh, I grew up in addiction. <laughs> I grew up with two. Well, I grew up with my mom, who was mostly a single mom. Um, my parents got divorced when I was eight. But both my parents struggle with addiction big time. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm not a, I'm not impacted. I mean, I knew they had alcoholism. They had AA signs up all over the house like they were going to meetings but it was getting healthy being sick again getting healthy being sick it was definitely a cycle um and i went all the way through college convinced i was okay hadn't been impacted at all made it through no problems <laughs> <laughs> and then i graduated college and i had no other plan and kind of my life as i knew it fell apart i'd always i realized that's how i survived i'd been goal oriented I've been focused on what was coming next and I had no plan after college and whew, mm -hmm. <laughs> the emotions that came up that relationship um looking back it was a godsend in some ways because I got into Al-Anon myself for that relationship that I was in at the time and I was like oh my god <laughs> I'm not crazy I'm mm -hmm other people felt this way you're told growing up that everything's fine we're okay like made to doubt yourself right um and so I realized wow there's something here and that's when the healing really began and after that I started going to meditation groups um, I worked in health insurance at the time and this wonderful lady came and led these meditation circles and only a few people ever showed up <laughs> in this like building with hundreds of people um and she taught this thing called Reiki. And I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm being called to it. Um, and, and now I I notice a lot how it's being called to things. And mm -hmm. that to me feels very much like the Akashic Records now, like this, this deep and powerful just knowing or having to 
be somewhere or do something. I didn't know it at the time, but everything in me said to sign up for that. Um, and she actually didn't have a Reiki course for a little while, but she had this psychic mediumship circle. And so I show up, everybody has these pictures we have to bring of a past loved one or animal. And we sit around uh, checking to see what we can get from these pictures. And that was my first time really ever trying anything like this. And I was spot on and it was really a little scary (laughs) and a little fun. But the picture that I read for somebody else, I think, I don't remember if I got the name, but um, the energy of the animal that had passed and just all this kind of stuff. And then I did the Reiki and in Reiki, my Reiki master had mentioned this thing called the Akashic Records. I was like, I don't know what that is, but that's what I want to do next. And then I kind of forgot about it for a few years and happened to see this uh, course on Facebook. Somebody was teaching this thing called Akashic Records. It brought back that memory and I signed up not knowing what it was and it was incredible. Um, That was probably, oh God, seven years ago now. Reiki was really my first spiritual love. And when I first Mm -hmm. started to receive messages, doing sessions, not quite knowing what was happening, what I was receiving, uh, but it was so important on my self-healing journey. And then I'd started, I remember when my Reiki master was teaching, I was like, oh, I can't believe this is her job that she like gets to teach Reiki and do this stuff all the time. It just felt like this faraway dream and slowly it got closer and closer to being reality. And I gave my notice at my health insurance job. I had I'd work all day and then work all night on my business. My husband was like, what are you doing? I never see you. (laughs) I don't want our lives to be like this. He's like, don't worry, just just trust me. And I was able to replace my income, gave my notice. The next day found out I was pregnant with my son. Oh my goodness. We're doing this thing. And it's been solid and stable since. And that was I think I might have taken my records training, maybe had started teaching, working with it a little bit, uh, but really started to dig into it in the last five years or so. And it was just so great because it added another layer to everything that I was doing. And that's where I am. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I mean, I think a lot of us get into this kind of work, you know, we're, we're trying to heal ourselves. And then, so through that journey, we are able to share that with other people. Um, I, I just, I love your story so much. And I'm just curious about, you said when you did the first experience in the mediumship circle, um, that like reading that picture, like it was, kind of exciting but also kind of scary what felt scary about it at first it felt like tapping into something that was somehow um I don't know if forbidden is the right word but that's the closest I can get to right now because I remember these feelings growing up of just knowing things about Mm -hmm. people and I was like a little kid just getting like uh feelings mostly was what happened when I was little about people but then not really being able to trust that because everything else that was going on. And so I think I kind of tucked it away. I mean, I definitely did because it felt like I shouldn't know these things. I'm a little kid. And so I like hid that part away and tapping into the picture had to go into that part. Right. And so I'm like, Oh, what's going to open up as I walk Mm -hmm. down. path? But the whole time it never felt, um, dangerous scary it's more like that fear that bridges excitement like it feels a little scary but it's also exciting it never felt wrong it always felt right so that's what I trusted most of all even though this is scary this feels right it feels welcoming it feels okay it feels like me it felt like a part of me that I had not explored a Mm -hmm. lot and so the scary part was okay am I gonna explore this am I gonna see what's there and I did. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Wow. But yeah, wow. you, <laughs> yeah, you definitely wow. opened that door wide open. Yes. So you yes. kind of had to had to unlearn some stuff basically that you had picked up. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like don't share too much. Don't look too deep. Mm-hmm. Keep your blinders on. Um, 
all that kind of stuff. And I love your show name because I feel like that part of me that did that became a skeptic. And so I'm like walking the line between skeptic and seeker. And there's still sometimes that questioning um, or definitely that that questioning that comes through. But a lot of that came from having to to walk that line, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure that there was a lot of aspects of that growing up that was just protective. And so it's like, this is how my system adapted to the environment I was, you know, forced to live in. Yes, absolutely. Obviously, we know you work in the Akashic Records. Um, Maybe not everybody listening knows much about the Akashic Records. So can you give us kind of an overview of what exactly this is? Absolutely. So the Akashic Records, the way I describe it today, now after seven-ish years of working in it, is it's a place of expanded consciousness. So I used to describe it as this place that we could go to, to explore anything you want. It it holds the records of everything that's ever happened um, for you individually and us as a collective. For me, it feels very tied to earth, to human beings, uh, plants and animals, definitely nature life in there too but it's this place that we could go to to access additional information now it feels like it's actually within us and we're expanding our consciousness to hold the space for it so if you think about every day we've got a certain number of working memory slots and you're thinking about what are you going to eat what's coming up on your schedule who's in front of you you're thinking about your all of your identities for me mom wife you know all of your labels who you are as a human being and so the akashic records lets us get out of our working memory for a little bit and into all the other stuff we know all the stuff we know from growing up all the stuff we know that we've forgotten or isn't in that easily accessible part of our brain Uh, So learning how to access the Akashic Records is learning how to do that. And I truly believe probably everybody has access to records at least once in their life, if not multiple times. It's something that's innate to us, but we have to give it this name in order to want to explore it and understand what it is. And it's also a place you can learn to access for specific reasons. I've noticed in my own experience and others, when you have accessed it without knowing what it is, it's in a time of need, maybe something's going on, you need that extra information, you need that extra awareness. Um, So you can learn how to access it. So you don't need a time of need, you can just go in and explore Mm -hmm. if you want to. Do you feel like or believe that all intuitive guidance is coming from the Akashic Records or is there some differentiation there? Yeah, I feel like there is a differentiation because I feel like there's an intuitive guidance that comes from our working memory, from the parts of ourself that we're thinking about, your your intuition based on who you've been in the past three months, six months, maybe even up to a year. I feel like your intuition can shift and change. Let's say something really, uh, maybe you had a scary car accident or something, shoots the adrenaline through your body, like shifts things. Your intuition is going to take that into account, right? And be a little bit more perceptive of dangers, a little bit more thinking about cars in a different way, right? The Akashic Records is your intuition, but not just your, your what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not just the intuition based on your most recent events, but your entire soul's intuition. So I think there is a difference that you're getting more access to everything. It's like, I guess, expanded what we would traditionally think of as mm-hmm. intuition. Because mm-hmm. I've gotten it when I first started doing Akashic Records, intuitively I would think the answer would be something right if somebody had asked me a question I'd be like oh no you shouldn't do that or yes you should and then I'd go on the records and it was actually a very different answer <laughs> I'm like okay this is interesting this is very interesting yeah, yeah it's, oh. it's a fine line with intuition and what the records yeah. are. I think it's just another layer of information that comes in yeah and going back to what you said about like the car accident and you're a little bit more hypervigilant, you know, I was wondering if um, 
I know like sometimes, you know, kids who go through trauma, they become more hypervigilant and almost more intuitive because of it's a survivor su- survival skill, you know, and I'm wondering if you feel like, like how much of that is natural and innate and how much of that is like, n- you know, nurture. Yeah. It's, I, f- um, let's see, I feel like your intuition is definitely a lot of nurture, a lot of what happened to you. Um, but the ability to access the records or to expand our consciousness, that's innate, that's in our nature, I think. Um, and then that intuition that makes us hypervigilant or gives us those feelings about people. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a tough one to really distinguish and decipher, but I think there's an intuition that also some people are born of. Like if you think about psychic clairs or people who maybe are more intuitive or more empathic, mm-hmm. does that all come from trauma? 99% of intuits, <laughs> intuitives and empaths I might have had some kind of trauma, but I haven't met a human that hasn't had trauma. So it's right. hard to tell. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd have to talk to more people who haven't really experienced um, childhood trauma to see how their intuition feels Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it would exclude them yeah definitely it's just an interesting thing to think about you know that nature versus nurture yeah Um, it's actually something I was going to ask about because I I I read I read a lot and I I talk to a lot of people about a lot of different things and I go through you know all the different like the different versions of, of what people would consider to be, I guess, esoterica. We need better words for these things, honestly. Um, but, you know, <laughs> you know pe- people who catalog, you know, for example, uh, UFO co- uh, contactees tend to say, you know, 90 some odd percent of these people come from a background of, of having some kind of trauma or abuse. People who, you know, say that they see, uh spirits that aren't connected to the kind of like kind of things that you folks are talking about that, that just you know one off spirit or like they think they have a poltergeist or they think they have a haunted house also come from that kind of background you know i know that there are magic pr- practitioners who say that the people who are able to work the best within magical communities are the people who come from either through childhood or through adult years or, you know, or even something as traumatic as like, you know, being in being middle-aged and going through a really bad car accident or, you know, an airplane scare, you know, the, it does seem like, I, I, I think that people who have stories have stories. They've had the experiences they've had and uh, across the board there, there are things that seem to connect a lot of these people. And one of those things to me, seems like trauma is one of those things. So yeah. it's interesting to me to hear you say that a lot of the people that you've had contact with that go, th- you know, are into what you what you all are into and, and and doing what you're doing also have that that yeah marker in their life. That's fascinating to think about, um, and I would say it's a spectrum of trauma too. You know, and if we think about it biologically trauma changes us right Mm -hmm. if something traumatic happens to you you get access to different parts of yourself that you wouldn't Mm -hmm. normally for survival (laughs) you know you do if you think about um i don't know a deer running through the woods nice and peaceful and relaxed first time it ever sees a predator coming for it a lot of its biological alarms come on right and it's heightened awareness then it's able to shut it off and knows it's safe, right? Well, that's something we struggle with as humans is knowing when we're actually safe. But I would imagine if something traumatic happens to you, that uh, that opens up biologic stuff. Why wouldn't it then also open up the other realms of the, yeah. into the empathic stuff, something else outside of us? So yeah, I bet there is a huge connection. Do you guys feel like you've talked to people who haven't had trauma? <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> like in, in my life? Like, yeah. no. 
I mean, I I'm a love- therapist, so no, like everybody I, I know has trauma. But I mean, I think it I think it is varying degrees. I think everybody yeah. has experienced yeah. something we could qualify as traumatic, some people more so than others. And everybody responds to it in a different way. Like you said, like some people, it's like the incident can happen and then their system can bring them back to safety, yes. you know, and feeling, you know, stable. And then other people, it's like that system is just now programmed to be on high alert so I I think it's just different for everybody I I I wonder if you haven't experienced trauma maybe you're less likely to explore some of this stuff there's no need or you know to seek right to seek that healing yeah why it happened what you know to do that kind of internal reflection maybe that does come yeah yeah we need extra I've... support, right? We need what? We need extra support. If we went through trauma, <laughs> we're looking for extra support and we're kind for of sure. looking for it in all of these mystical, magical ways to try to find it too. So that could make sense when you mention like uh, spell workers or other people. Um, yeah, that would make a lot of sense to me. Also, a lot of people don't realize that some of the things that have happened to them actually qualify as trauma. I've definitely yeah. been in situations in my life, especially like drinking in bars with friends where yeah. somebody will bring up something that they think is a funny story from their childhood. And they get about three quarters of the way through telling the story. And yeah. like the, the, the table is just kind of awkwardly looking and be like, we are so sorry that happened to you. And they're like, Oh, well, maybe this is not a funny story. Maybe, maybe this was not okay. And it's, it's weird. Uh-huh. Like the, this, this light bulb moment that people have and, I mean, a bar is not the best place to realize that, but it happens, you know. I, yeah. You know, you, if you don't have a context for an experience to realize, not everybody went through this, or maybe I should not have had to deal with this. It's yeah. just a thing that happens, you know. Yeah, and, and a lot of people do approach it with humor, right? Like that, oh, this funny thing happened as a way of processing it, and everyone else is like, oh, not actually that funny. Are you okay? Yeah, that's. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I think um, I I love working in the Akashic Records and I love working with it for guidance, but I think my favorite part about the Akashic Records is doing healings in it. So, you know, just kind of talking about like, you know, what we've been exploring of like trauma and the impacts of that, like Mm -hmm. how, how do you work in the Akashic Records when it comes to like healings? The first thing that I always recommend is just sitting in the records, just sit there. And sometimes a lot of people, once they, they want to learn how to access it, to be able to ask questions and get powerful answers and get that extra wisdom. A lot of times they might struggle with being able to hear or receive messages a certain way. And I think that it's because we need to like acclimate to being in that energy more. And sometimes we might just need some healing, right? So just kind of having that expanded consciousness, open yourself up to outside of your day to day is healing in and of itself. And then when I want more directed healing, you know, if we want to do something really specific, if I'm doing healing for myself, let's say for something in, in childhood, um, I'll go into the records and I'll ask to see that time or that experience if there's a specific thing and then ask to just feel the healing energy I think I'm definitely influenced because I learned Reiki first so a lot of times when I go to do healing I'll open the records and I'll feel the Reiki flowing so I'm not sure if there's somebody who hasn't did you do Reiki first or second oh first yeah if there's somebody who hasn't done Reiki if their healing would feel different in the records But for me, I can feel it just coming in like this wave and kind of refreshing and and renewing things. Um, And then if I'm doing healing for clients, I'll ask, you know, what they would like healing around. And then I'll open the records to invite in the healing and then ask to see what we need to see. So sometimes I'll get a specific message for them or something they need to shift or a lot of healing in the records is actually words that come through like needing to hear a phrase in a certain way or your permission slip to stop doing that I mean like a lot of times some you know maybe I'll say in a session like 
I just heard that uh, you need to stop doing that. Like, just stop. It's okay. But people feel this need to, right, keep doing whatever the thing is. And it's actually keeping them stuck in their healing journey. So a lot of times when I'm doing healing the records, it'll be words or phrases that come through. And then the he- the healing frequency as well. Everyone is different. I would say every Akashic Records healing, they may have a lot of similarities, but everyone has a little something different that comes through. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. You know, I think everybody responds to things differently. Like I've worked with people who really feel connected like to fire energy you know Mm -hmm. and so it's like that healing there's like a healing cleansing fire or and then there's some people who that really does not resonate with they have a trauma around fire and so it's like they're receiving more of like just light energy or like liquid light energy so I think it is it really depends on your soul and your energy system and what you need it adapts I mean that's why the records are so beautiful it knows everything that you've been through from the time you were in utero to now, and it knows if you had fire trauma or some scary thing happened. So it's going to send something that that will help you get to where you're asking to be. This is another really important thing. I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but I feel like I need to say right. it right now. With the records, nothing set in stone. Yeah. You know, so many people coming to me saying, is this thing going to happen Um, Am I going to find love? Am I going to uh, make a certain amount of money? Don't stop at the first answer, right? Like if, if we go into the records and it says, am I going to fall in love? And the answer is no, you're not doomed for life. (laughs) We still have our, our cognizance and our choices and so many uh, opportunities to change things. So if I ever get an answer like that, or I'm like, whoa, that that's not what I want. <laughs> then you ask the next question. Well, what can I do to shift or change so that I can invite them in? Anybody who's new to the records or anybody who's exploring the records, I'd encourage you to use the records as a tool to get where you, where you want to be. The records don't care. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but the records don't have some uh, set out plan or destiny for you they'll show you where you're most likely to be if nothing changes um but it's all for supporting where you want to go what you want to make happen you still have that kind of free will i guess i'd say yeah Yeah, that's what i was gonna mention mention it sounds like what you what you guys are saying is you know there there is still like this is not going to be a, a hard and fast way to get an answer like like a medium on a television show. Your free will still comes into play. You're still making the choices that you're making. Yeah. And so is everybody else. And so cause and effect is very much a real thing based on yeah. how people people interact with one another and, and think about themselves. This just can possibly give you uh, maybe some potential directions if you make certain choices and ask certain questions. Yes, exactly. I want people to come to an Akashic record sessions and feel empowered, feel like they can walk away knowing what to do next. I don't want people to feel like they need to rely on an Akashic Record practitioner to know what's coming next in their life, right? I'm here to guide you. Sometimes I describe the records as like a desert that you need a guide through because you could get to the desert, but what are you going to do once you're there or a forest or whatever nature element Mm -hmm. you want, right? It can help to have somebody explore it with you, but you everybody has access to this, I think. Yeah. That's interesting that you that's a, maybe the second or third time that you said that. So you, you you feel, and I'm pretty sure that Brittany feels this way as well, that with the right um maybe the right attitude or direction, anyone can access what you're accessing. Absolutely. I do not feel like a gatekeeper of the records or that only certain people are um, whatever enough to be able to access them. I think we're all accessing them. I think it's something we may have learned as humans differently in the past. It may have been something that was more open and talked about. And I don't even think it was probably ever called the Akashic Records until somebody was like, we have to name 
we have to give this thing a name so we can all mm-hmm. talk about it, right? And I'm sure so many different cultures call it something mm-hmm. different. This place that we're accessing for extra information. I heard this woman talking about. Um, Oh, I can't remember her terminology. I'm like, that's the record. <laughs> that's <definitely laughs> something, like, something like higher realm or second realm or something. Yeah. So I think people are finding it and we're all calling it something different. Uh, and we used to tell each other how to get there, you know, maybe in a, your community or your grandmother would be like, hey, yeah, if you just sit still for a little bit, <laughs> some things will happen, you know? Uh, so yeah, I love teaching people because it gives them direction on what to do on how to access it more openly. But I think everybody with the right, um, circumstances can definitely access it. I I think you're right that there's probably a lot of different ways of conceptualizing it and talking about it. You know, we, uh, recently read the Brian Weiss book, many lives, many masters. Yes. And, you know, yeah, it's a great one. And, you know, it's all about past life regression. And to me, they're accessing the re- the records. They're just not naming that, you know, yeah, that that's where they are. Isn't he the one who happened upon it? Like he was leading a child or somebody through their childhood and all of a sudden they went <laughs> beyond uh-huh. their birth yeah. was? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that person was in hypnosis and, or whatever he calls it. And they went into their records and all of a sudden they're in their mm-hmm. soul information and not just the here and now and the day to day. So, yes, I feel like he was definitely guiding people to that space that we're calling the records. Yep. And I was going to say, um, I even think people with different mental capabilities are able to access it. I had this incredible story of this woman who went through my course and her son had something I can't remember what it was now but she had a hard time communicating and she said when she learned the record she felt like she was able to communicate with him better if he was in there too or not it was so uh, profound and really one of the most special experiences hearing her say that so I feel like I wish I had access to all of this like this is the skeptic part of me, but all of this like scientific equipment, I want to like, mm-hmm. I don't want to make people guinea pigs, but I'm, I want to know I'm it's that mm-hmm. seeking part too, right? I want to see and know what's happening in our brains. And could we communicate on different levels without needing words without, um, if there is a communication block, are we able to access somebody or some way to get that information? I think so. I think so too. I love it. You know, I mean, it's, it's that elevated level of consciousness, right? They don't need the words. It's just the energy speaking, yeah. communicating. Yes. Yeah. That's something that I've been very interested in recently is just like, you know, I mean, obviously I'm the spiritual seeker, but I, I want to know also like, how does this work? <laughs> you know? And so like, thinking about channeling it's like what parts of your brain are activated when somebody when you're channeling when you are in the records and I'm you're like put me in one channel. of those scanners I yes. see what is going on in my brain oops yeah <laughs> what's happening yeah yeah I, I, I'll source a full body MRI and then yes. uh, all right you know. <laughs> give me that we'll make that happen there I want to see what's happening yep. absolutely it's fascinating yeah. So you've mentioned a couple of times how like anybody can learn how to access the records. Obviously, I'm going to plug you that Emily Jean is a wonderful Akashic Records teacher. (laughs) (laughs) That course, it was life changing for me. Absolutely. But how how would people start that journey for themselves? How would they get themselves to a place where they can be open to that energy? Yeah. Great question i would say the first thing if you're listening and you're interested in the akashic records is to literally just sit down get your screens away from you get distractions away from you and just sit at first i would say sit with your eyes open set a timer for three minutes and just practice just being getting out of that programming of day-to-day autopilot default mode um and just practice that and then close your eyes and just hold an intention that you'd like to explore this thing called the Akashic Records. Um, 
and in the course we go into like specific ways to do it and you know all these different ways you can explore but just sit with an intention in your heart that you'd like to explore this thing maybe with a question in mind or something that you'd like to see more about um and the biggest thing is to not expect it to come in a certain way the people i like i said i think everyone can access it but some people do struggle with getting the information or feeling like something's happening and i think that comes from thinking that it needs to come in a certain way because of movies and media who make it so much more interesting than it actually is with like something popping out of the i don't know in front of you or like getting words written or actually hearing the voices a lot of times it can be a feeling it can be a memory or a certain song popping into your head so as you sit there pay attention to everything because everything becomes part of that records experience the amount of times that i've been in the records thinking about a certain topic and i see a book in my room and a certain word on that book in a way that I've never seen it before, or I notice something outside that I've never noticed before. It's coming everywhere. And that's what we're doing. We're expanding our consciousness to see everything instead of just what we've trained ourselves to focus on. So if you want to learn to access these, practice by just sitting still, allowing your 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 mind to kind of open up explore explore would be the best way and then you can google questions to ask in the records you can search all these different things to explore but start there just building that relationship with the records and what that could look like for you yeah it's it's like that saying quiet the mind so the soul can speak and so mm-hmm. it's just you have to create the space where it's you're open and that you can receive that information we're all way too busy, overmaxed, overworked, overscheduled. Even when we're not scheduled, we're scheduling ourselves with scrolling on the phone. And mm-hmm. um, I, I do not think screens are evil. I love my iPad games. I love scrolling on social media. I, you know, it's just about consciously saying, okay, I'm going to zone out for a little bit. I'm going to watch my silly TV show. I'm going to yeah. play a game. I'm going to do whatever. Um And then noticing when you feel like it's becoming uncontrollable, when you feel like you can't stop scrolling, that's when you want to get as far away as possible and just sit for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you know when you're actually in the Akashic Records? For me, it's like a deep breath. It's like, I just feel more like me I feel like all uh settled I guess so I go into the records I feel like it's a deep breath I feel settled and I feel like it's very much the way I experience the records is in feelings <laughs> not so much I do get words and images but I would say the first thing for me is feeling so I feel like I'm no longer in the room that I'm in if you close your eyes and feel like the room that you're in where the walls are, where everything is. All of a sudden I feel like I'm in this giant expanse of space um, and there's so much more to explore. I think that's it now that I just know. I'm trying to think when I Mm -hmm. first started accessing the records, how did I know I was there? I used, I don't feel this as much anymore, but I used to feel like I was underwater for a second, like almost like my ears were adjusting or like uh yeah like this quiet muffled just for a a second and then I felt like I was in the records um now it's so familiar it's just like I take a deep breath and I'm like oh there we Mm -hmm. go (laughs) yeah yeah there's that shift yeah some people feel will tell me a lot that they they see a particular thing or they um They know they're in their records because they're getting this, um, like an image, like, oh, I'm going into the forest or I'm going into this room that I always Mm -hmm. see when I enter the records. So it's a little different for everybody. That's why it's definitely a relationship that you're building. It's not something that might, it might not necessarily be super easy right away, Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can form that relationship. Yeah. I think for me, it's similar of 
I, I don't know that mine feels like expansive, but it feels like my body is vibrating at a different mm-hmm. frequency. It just, it's like sped up kind of, yeah. that's how I feel it and experience it. Oh my God. Now that you mentioned that when I first started doing uh group readings on Facebook, like I'd open up a Facebook live and anybody could hop on and answer questions. Oh my God. I'm, I was vibrating out of this world. It was so mm-hmm. bad. <laughs> I had to end a couple lives early because it was just way too much energy because now I'm holding the records for me for that live for everybody who's hopped on the live so I got much better about closing that person's records after uh they asked their question Mm -hmm. but I also started putting a grounding crystal right on my feet or in my lap when I was doing lives and that helped a lot um but just knowing what was happening helped a lot too but I remember yeah it was really intense I felt like my heart, like my chest, I was so, I didn't know what was happening. This was very early on, but Mm -hmm. it is an extra energy that your body's learning how to adjust to because we have that certain amount that we're used to processing every day. And then you add in that other layer and your body's like, oh, what's all this other stuff to process Mm -hmm. and digest? Yeah. What would you say to people who are afraid of like um, the messages you're receiving? It's coming from like a negative entity or source in the Akashic Records. What would you say to those people? You have to learn how to trust yourself. And if something feels right and true for you and trying to distinguish what might be a fear feeling or a um and openness. My experience in the records has been nothing uh, evil or low vibration or entities could even exist in there. It's not a place where things live or exist. It's a place of awareness. There's, There's an awareness there that's connected to you, connected to us on earth, connected to humanity, um, so it's my belief that nothing low vibration could even exist there because it is such a high vibrational space. Like that vibration that we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. It's like this, this warmth and this healing and this wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and from my experience in the records, if there's ever something that you can't get access to, like you ask about something it's just going to be like um a fog you you can't get into somebody's records if they don't want you to you can't get into the records of something um that's not yours to access so it feels very protective it doesn't feel dangerous at all um nothing negative is in that space but i'm big proponent for personal empowerment so if it doesn't feel good to you then don't explore it Mm-hmm. start small or see see what feels good for you as right. I'm not I don't feel like I'm communicating with a specific thing I feel like I've stepped into this place where now I can feel everything that I need to feel I can see everything I need to see um, I'll do readings to connect with specific things but it's the records of that thing does that make sense mm-hmm. <laughs> right so yeah, yeah you, you, I was gonna say that So it for you, it's not that you are working with a specific guide in the records. It is the records itself. Yes, exactly. But I, you can go like after my cousin passed, um, I went in to visit with him and it took me a while to feel ready enough to do that Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, just lots of emotions and everything. But I went in to spend time with him, but I don't even now I know it's like the the energy imprint of him almost. It's like uh, the records of him, right? It's not like he's living in the records. I'm accessing this way to still connect to his awareness or his soul or that part of himself that has passed but still exists to some capacity. Um, But he had a record, right? Here on earth, he had a record. He's had his soul experiences. I don't think that entities would have like a soul experience listed in the records, you know, I don't do a lot of exploration with, 
with entities or or anything like mm-hmm. that. So that's my personal take on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is going back a little bit, but you said, you know, when you're working in the records, it's really feeling based for you in a lot of ways, um, which does and does not surprise me just because I've seen you channel, you know, like healings and messages for people and and whatnot. Um, So how, what is your experience like when you are channeling? So for me, I definitely have to close my eyes and like shut out where I am physically. And then it is like my mind kind of goes blank, but I'm still very much me. I'm still very much here. I do have this awareness of where I am. Um, I don't feel like I'm disconnected from myself, but I feel like I am opening this other layer. And then when I channel the messages or feel them coming through it is like a just a knowing all of a sudden I know what I need to say a lot of times now I'm just um saying the words and I'm not exactly sure what came through like somebody will say oh remember that time you said that thing I'm like "Eh, not really like I'm not really I'm not trying to hold on to them as much in the beginning I would try to hold on to and remember everything but now I'm really just letting the words that need to come through, come through, not trying to grab onto them as much. Um, and so it's a whole body feeling and knowing. And I would say it's feeling not in my mind space. I'm like finally getting out of that mind space and more into my body. If I'm doing a healing for somebody, I can feel their body. And so I'll feel it's almost like this is sound really creepy when it's not. <laughs> it's almost like I'm in their body or their body is like what I'm feeling. I'm not feeling it as like I'm looking at you. I'm feeling it in my own body. So if you had something going on with like your shoulder, I would feel that in my I'd say, oh, it feels like you got something going on in your shoulder <laughs> or like all of a sudden I'll get a headache. I'm like, oh, do you have a headache right now? Um or if somebody needs to drink more water, I'll get really thirsty. Like, oh my God, I think you need to drink some more water. Like when's the last time you had a a sip of water? So it's a feeling that I'll feel and process myself in my own body. But there's a layer where I know it's not my own body, where I know that it will go away as soon as I'm done um, channeling or in the record Mm -hmm. or as soon as the session's over. And then... Other times I'll get memories or like see glimpses of, of things, but even that is more a feeling of what it would feel like to see the thing. I'm not actually seeing an image in my head. Like an impression kind of. Yeah. An impression. Definitely like an impression or, um, a knowing very rarely do I actually see like a movie screen of something yeah so for for clarification because like this is there's just so many potential meanings for for channeling and like there's different people who do different things and uh, very very possibly that they're all valid but they're not doing the same thing at all so would would you say this is uh an outside entity is telling you things or a version of the person themselves is telling you these things or there's something different that i'm just off yeah the, off the track so it's or... not channeling in the sense of like Abraham Hicks or Esther where she channels like this this entity that is Abraham but I I feel like Abraham is in the record you know like Abraham is this record there's some sort of connection there but it's not like that for me I'm not allowing something to come in and and talk it's more like um I'm navigating this wide open space and feeling the things that I need to feel and then sharing what I'm seeing or sharing what I'm experiencing. Um, So I guess I would say, I think I call myself an Akashic guide. My title has changed. Nothing feels like quite right, but Akashic like guide or explorer. Um, And then if I'm like answering a question for somebody, it's more like I'm opening the records from their perspective, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So if they were to go into the records, what would they be seeing or feeling or experiencing? 
and then translating that for them. And I try to do as little interpreting as possible. I try to just share exactly what I'm seeing, even if it doesn't make sense to me. I've learned the more I do that, the more accurate and effective it is. When I interpret, that's adding in my layer of stuff. Um, What I will say, okay, say I saw a purple horse. Um, I'll say I'm seeing a purple horse. I don't know exactly what this means or how this connects to the question that you're asked. It could mean this, you know, I'll, I'll say that, but I'll never go in and say, I'm seeing a purple horse. And it definitely means Mm -hmm. that you need to do X, Y, Z. That's not the type of practitioner that I am. Um, I think we're all humans trying to practice this art. And so I want to, I always want that to be very clear too. Um, I'm not the end all be all of what's <laughs> right. I want you to feel what's right and true for you and, and what resonates with you from a, a session. It's really interesting how you just put it of you're opening the records and you're seeing it from like their perspective. If they, they were in the records themselves, um, you know, I, I like to do healings in the records for people. I don't love to go in and ask questions because I'm so concerned about like giving the wrong information or like me interpreting it wrong. So I like how you don't, it's just like, this is just yes. exactly what I'm experiencing. This is what I see. You make the, your own interpretations. Yes. I like that. And I think of all the skills you have access to just knowing you you could then say, and it might mean this, or I would encourage you to explore that, but you're not interpreting what they would have actually seen in the records because three days from now, they could be like, I know what that purple horse meant. Oh my God, (laughs) I saw it on a giant truck or I remember this toy I had growing up. And if you had shifted or changed that at all, they wouldn't have been able to have that connection or realization. Yeah, sometimes the questions can be tricky, especially if somebody comes to you and really wants a particular answer. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can feel that. Um, It can be tough, but just sticking as, as close to um, what you're receiving as possible. And if you're doing healings in the records, you're receiving on some level what they need to heal. So it's going to be the same energy. We probably put more pressure on the questions. Um, Right they need to be a certain way and also remember the records are not written in stone for the future Mm -hmm. so this is what i'm seeing now and you could shift and change that if you wanted to yeah i think that's been a really important lesson for me personally is like nothing is written in stone because my life has changed so dramatically in the past couple years you know and it's like the energy felt like it was going this way and then it was like oh we're totally this is this is the direction we're going in you know and so like as a person who both is open to the adventure of the shifting but also like certainty that has been a lesson that I've had to learn of just like nothing is set in stone I do have free will and things that feel really right one day could feel very not right the next day they feel good until they don't and that's how you know what to do next all of a sudden you wake up one day and this thing that was set in stone isn't in alignment anymore and you've got to figure out okay what just happened (laughs) how do I course correct give my or not even course correct but how do I figure out now what is what's calling me yeah it's it's definitely interesting (laughs) this is all uh very interesting to me uh I I had kind of heard of this stuff like off and on throughout my life but Brittany being into it and and knowing so much about it made me want to to really figure, figure out what she's talking about and 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 what's out there and uh so I, I i read a lot and uh so she had a couple books that she had me read we she mentioned before many lives many masters uh mm-hmm. there's also a book called the acoustic records made easy which is the first thing i read that like i was like is there such a thing as acoustic records for dummies and she's like almost <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that that's written by a lady named Sandra Ann Taylor. I found that to be super oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, you know, per- personally, she she kind of lost me a little bit towards the end because she connects a lot of her stuff to what I would consider uh, religious or Christian imagery. 
and that for me i, I kind of i leave the room it, it's just like but i also acknowledge that everyone comes at everything in their life from the from the experiences that they've had so maybe she has that background and that's what makes sense to her and that's how she wrote it and that's you know that's cool for her but that part of it not so much for me uh are you familiar with jane roberts do you know who that is jane roberts mm -hmm. oh. have you ever heard of the seth material oh i've heard of the seth material but i didn't know that jane roberts i haven't read that though it's similar to abraham hicks she's cha she's channeling seth yes okay. uh and 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 they're the one one of the pieces there, there's like eight books in in this whole like kind of like cluster of, of material i wouldn't call it a series because it's not they're not like linear in any way awesome. one of them is called seth speaks it's basically uh the entity dictating a a non-fiction book word for word that her uh jane's husband uh basically typed as they did it wow. and it talks about uh a history of, of basically the the reincarnational cycle and what people have right and wrong about it and the, the the words they're using are different than what you guys are using, but okay. the concepts are pretty close to being the same thing. Mm. And for me, when when multiple people in different time frames and different uh, points of view who don't have access to one another are saying similar things, I'm more I'm 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 going to pay more attention. Uh, you know, they, they don't have a way to influence each other really. Like oh. I, I sincerely doubt that, uh, you know, a, a, a upper class, uh, psychologist in in you know, in in New York City had read ten years before a, an author's channeling book. You know, I, I just don't think oh. that that's likely to have happened, especially since the Weiss seems to have been pretty skeptical until it happened in front of him. So, yeah. you know, to me, those things. You know, not being connected, I'm more interested in that. You know, and people I know, ha like Brittany, has had experiences that you know I I believe that she's had experiences that she has. So all this is is very interesting to me in that context. Um, it's very interesting hearing you talk about this for sure, especially yeah, the, the so channeling when stuff. You, when you hear people talking about the same thing but with different terminology, and you're like, wait, that sounds really familiar. Um, another really good beginner Akashic Records is by Linda Howe. She writes a lot of great things that don't have as much um, religious undertones or overtones, whichever one. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good example. Sandra Ann Taylor, I did her course through Hay House. I've taken a bunch of courses in Akashic Records after my first one because there were some things with my first one that felt a little off that didn't feel right. And so I wanted to explore more um and see how other people are doing it and what other people are talking about. And uh, Linda Howe was somebody I read a lot, but I did Sandra and Taylor's course through Hay House. And I really liked some of her ways of accessing and her um, like meditation for accessing. But she had taught something about rewriting your past, like basically totally telling a new story that those things didn't even happen to you. And that was a big, that's one of those things that didn't feel right to me that felt wrong. Um, anytime I do a healing of the past, I want you to still know it happened. It was in your soul. Like it happened, but you can maybe move, remove the emotional charge from it mm -hmm. that, that impacts your day to day. And I didn't, that didn't resonate with me. I, one, I mean, she's a huge teacher, so I'm not going to say it's not possible, but if the records are this place that hold the records of everything that ever happened and you rewrite the past, wouldn't it have the record of you rewriting it? Couldn't, could you ever really erase that, that thing that happened? Yeah. You're creating a paradox at that point. If, if this was yeah. physics, if this was physics, that's a paradox. And aren't you right, more, like putting a blinder on your present self rather than actually mm -hmm. doing some healing so there were a couple of things it's been interesting every course has had a couple of things that i'm like eh, you know yeah. take what you can and leave the rest uh but that's like she's interpreting it through her experience and her records right so mm -hmm. seeing a lot of angels and and god mm -hmm. or whatever the religious pieces are that's her piece of it too you know like i really connect uh with mother mary and i love her energy 
but I wouldn't use that in a session for somebody else unless that came through specifically right. for them. Like I wouldn't teach everybody in order to get to the records, you have to access Mother Mary's energy because I know that that's my, that's my experience. That's my mm-hmm. personal connection. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, going back to the rewriting thing, it's like, would it, I mean, I don't, I don't know how any of this works, but it's like, would that create like a new dimension? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's is that terrible. creating a whole new reality? <laughs> right? love, like, yeah. 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 Both things exist, you know, but I'm now connected to this other energy. I, I agree with you. I think, um, I think it's just powerful to, like you said, like, dissipate the charge around it the emotional charge and I mean and again like therapeutically when I'm working with people with trauma that's what we're doing you know you can't erase the memory no matter like if we're doing EMDR or whatever it's like that memory will always be there it's just when I access that memory I don't have the same visceral reaction to it and wasn't there a movie where they did that, where they explored erasing people's memories and somehow it still came full circle, like same kind of, the emotions followed you. It wasn't uh, Jim Carroll. Yeah, Eternal, sp- I can't Sunshine remember the title. Spotless title. Mind or Spotless yeah. Mind. Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind. Yeah, okay. that's exactly, uh, yeah. And he's still, the emo- something's going to remain. <laughs> yes. And I know that's a fictional movie, but, you know, yeah. that's the kind of concepts that we're exploring. Yeah. So being the skeptic and exploring and reading, have you felt like you access the records or have you felt like you've wanted to? Well, so a couple of weeks ago or maybe a couple of months ago, time is just, just a mush at this point. Uh, mm-hmm. from, from 2020 on, everything is just kind of a blur. But um, um, at like some what point, year? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. In, at some point re- in recent history, we, we did do... Um, kind of a, a guided uh, what you call a guided meditation well, what would you call that yeah like kind of a guided meditation uh that was an effort to to access that um and you know we, you, you turned everything off and you know made it like you know kind of dim and, and relaxed and just you know went through it and listened and um what the audio kind of presumed that I would be experiences was 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 not but I I would say that you know I I did get some uh maybe maybe visuals sort of I guess would be a good way to put it um when I close my eyes I I I I just see darkness like everybody else and and so like you know that was there and then uh this kind of undulating color purple that wasn't really purple was there and then you know i kind of just kind of went with it you know i was just like well that's kind of pretty so like we'll we'll just watch that and see if anything happens and i didn't really feel anything or hear anything but uh if i relaxed i kind of felt like i was sensing uh the head of an owl which Mm -hmm. is kind of a motif within you know the, the my life um and then also um humorously enough uh the stereotypical gray alien image oh. kind of showed up in my mind um okay. and th- that you know kind of went back and forth a couple of times which you know may connect with what i think might be a screen memory from my 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 childhood which we cover a little bit in the first episode um of the podcast and and that that that, that was it that was interesting to me i, I it didn't it didn't do what the thing thought it was going to do, but I, I think that probably your mileage is going to vary person to person regardless. Yeah. I think that's even more of a sign you access something. If it wasn't going along what, what the meditation was guiding you to mm-hmm. experience, right? You're like, okay, I'm in and I'm going rogue. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm connected with my owl. I'm seeing this alien guy. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah for anybody who's had like little experiences like that you know um and you're interested just keep exploring just keep showing up you know you can ask you can go in again and be like i want to know more about that purple energy or i want to mm-hmm. know more about my owl um all that kind of stuff 
I, yeah, I think that's the power of the Akashic Records is just to ask the questions, you know, yeah. and to keep asking those questions. Like you said, like, don't just stop at the first one. Yeah. Like, you know, there, there's so many more questions you can to get expanded answers. It's a conversation, the relationship thing. Again, if you what if your nearest and dearest friend said to you, you're never going to be in a relationship. Would you just leave it at that? <laughs> <laughs> or would you be like, oh, what are you talking about? Why? Like, what are you yeah. noticing about me? What patterns are you seeing? Uh, what would you recommend? Like, don't just leave me there. Don't yeah. leave me uh, but Context we just... questions. <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's definitely something I teach is the power of asking powerful questions and exploring those because it is so key. Awesome. Yeah. So obviously you've been on a very big spiritual journey. How would you say Reiki, working in the Akashic Records, how has that changed things for you? Oh my gosh. Oh, it has changed everything. It's changed the way that I approach life. I think if I had never come across any sort of um, Reiki or spiritual aspect or or self-healing, I would be probably pretty sad, depressed. I would be just doing whatever was expected of me and not asking any questions and probably feeling a little lost, you know. Um, but now I make decisions based on what feels right, regardless of how I'm going to explain it to anybody else or, um, you know, I take into consideration my loved ones and of course, like what's best for us all as a family but I make empowered decisions now I have a lot more time just doing things just because I love them you know um lately I've been feeling really called to climb trees again <laughs> like I used to climb trees all the time when I was a little kid and I've been like I just want to go climb a tree I tried to look for a Facebook group for other people who love climbing trees <laughs> <laughs> But all the Facebook groups were people who do tree cutting for a living. Like, oh. <laughs> not exactly. So I've just been out climbing trees. Like, I feel like if I hadn't explored that stuff, that maybe that idea wouldn't have even occurred to mm-hmm. me. Maybe I would have been like, oh, that's silly. Like, I I don't have time for that. I can't go, <laughs> can't go climb a tree. Um, A lot more quiet time, too. A lot more just... um time without screens able to just be and explore life um feel a lot more in touch with my emotions when I first started this journey I couldn't even name what I was feeling I didn't know when I was feeling anything I had shut everything down for so long um still learning how to be in my body is something I was still working on because I spent that all the way up till college just in my head <laughs> for the most mm-hmm. part I mean, there's glimpses of other other times and plenty of beautiful experiences but I spent a lot of time in my head um and then to drop down into your body sensations were scary normal regular physical sensations were like what's happening am I dying am I having a heart attack <laughs> the amount of times early on in my spiritual journey that I went to like get my heart checked and everything was fine <laughs> or you know figuring through anxiety and panic I'm not saying everything's wonderful over here <laughs> you know I still I, but that's something I've learned is that the full range of human emotions is so important we have them all for a reason it's important to feel angry and feel sad and and feel whatever the heck way you feel but now I can witness myself experiencing it and explore it let I'm not gonna go into the records the second I'm feeling angry no I'm gonna be angry I'm gonna be sad and then if I want to learn about it later I'll go in and and explore Mm -hmm. um so it's just made me more me I guess it's gotten rid of all the clutter in the way that we try to like tell ourselves we have to do or or should do um yeah I absolutely love that you saying it just made you more you yeah you know I agree with that I think that's I think that is the spiritual journey is like how do we get back to our authentic nature or our true selves yes we're all 
so cool. We all have so many different things about us. And for some reason, we're trying to be the same version of something nobody even wants to be. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to be that thing. Why are we all trying to squish ourselves into that box? But actually, there is a lot of science behind why, because we're tribe you know we're Mm -hmm. oriented to be in a a culture Mm -hmm. and a collective and to feel safe and supported and so if we're all focused on that one thing it feels very scary and dangerous to go outside of it so I think being on your spiritual journey and self-reflection can help you feel safe within yourself so that you feel safe to explore this kind of stuff and do it a little differently I guess I would say because you're probably getting a lot of skeptics and seekers to your show and so if people are interested or curious about the spiritual community is always keep your personal um trust yourself I think what I want to say is trust yourself through the spiritual journey there are going to be people out there who are teaching things that might not be right and true for you there's going to be people out there who may be trying to just get your money. I had this, I heard a story the other day about this, um, somebody who has come to me before for Reiki healing was having trouble with her son. And she reached out to this woman who tried to sell her a bunch of jewelry that she specifically needed and told her that her son had a problem that he didn't have and that he was being bullied at school, which none of the son mm-hmm. said, no, I'm not. The teacher said, no, I'm not. The mom had never heard of it. And she, because she was in such a vulnerable place, you know, felt like she needed to do these things or she wasn't helping her son. So anybody exploring your journey, trust yourself, trust, even if you don't feel like you can trust yourself yet, if something feels wrong, don't feel like you need to explore it just to yeah. be open. There's so many avenues out there. Um And when in doubt, just please just sit for three minutes. (laughs) Just sit in stillness with your eyes open for a few minutes. Come back to yourself and you'll know better what decisions to make. Mm -hmm. Clearing out that clutter. Just get that, get quiet. And so you can really tune in. This has been great. Thank you very much for having this conversation with us. Thank you for having me on. It's been so fun to talk to you guys. Yeah, no, this has been wonderful. Like I said, I was very much looking forward to this conversation. And I think it will be a very good introduction to people who aren't familiar with the records. Um, And I mean, I learned some new things today, you know, and I've been exploring this for a couple of years now, too. So this was awesome. Thank you so much to grow and learn. And that's why we keep exploring. Definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. All right. Nice to meet you. (laughs) <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Okay. Take thank care, you. Emily. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. If you have a strange story you want to share with us, email us at seekerandskeptic at gmail.com. We look forward to talking to you soon. 